Hey everybody, Dr. Osborne here. Today I want to talk a little bit about vitamin B12. Does eating gluten cause vitamin B12 deficiency? If you missed Monday, Monday's live show, I talked about the three top deficiencies that I've seen over the past several decades in people with gluten sensitivity issues. And um, of course the answer to this question is yes, eating grain, eating gluten does and can cause a vitamin B12 deficiency. If we take a look at some of the what the research has to say on this, you know, one of the myths is that gluten sensitivity only causes celiac disease. A big myth. And in fact, gluten sensitivity is a major cause of stomach damage, intestinal damage, and nutrient malabsorption. Unfortunately, as it relates to B12, the area that gets damaged the most by gluten is the same area of the small intestine that allows you to absorb vitamin B12. That's why it's one of the, co- the top deficiencies seen in people with gluten sensitivity. And unfortunately, B12 deficiency causes a plethora of different types of problems, including things like anemia, migraine headaches, depression, severe fatigue, nerve damage, neuropathy. These are all extremely well-documented effects, side effects of gluten-induced damage causing vitamin B12 deficiency. If we look a little bit deeper at vitamin B12, you can see in this diagram a number of the different things that happen when your body is low in B12. Number one is you do not in, you do not produce DNA and RNA as effectively. This can slow down healing. Your body needs new DNA and new RNA all the time, and one of the functions of B12 is to help with that. It also can create a reduction in the ability of your body to produce the hormone, or not the hormone, but the protein, myelin basic protein. This is a protein that, that helps produce the myelin sheath. Now, for those of you who don't know what that is, the myelin sheath is the fatty insulation that surrounds nerve tissue. So when you lose your myelin sheath or you det- your myelin sheath deteriorates, that can create neuropathy. It can create muscle weakness, muscle pain. It can create burning pain. This is a very, very common side effect in multiple sclerosis. Many people with multiple sclerosis are vitamin B12 deficient and it exacerbates the neuropathy. So very, very important to understand B12 deficiency creates a neuropathy. It also causes you to not be able to adequately produce and mature your red blood cells. So what happens to your red blood cells is they get stuck in an immature state. They're basically, they're large and clumsy. That's what we call macrocytic anemia. And what, what happens with that is it leads to a deficit in your body's ability to be able to carry oxygen. So you become oxygen deprived. What happens when you don't get enough oxygen? You're tired, you're short of breath, your muscles hurt more frequently. You just don't feel like doing much. And vitamin B12, this is one of the reasons why B12 deficiency causes fatigue so aggressively is because it causes an anemia. Then we also get a process called hypomethylation. Vitamin B12 is necessary for methylation. So if any of those of you who have heard of methylation, it's a very important process. It regulates hormones. Methylation helps you produce things like glutathione. It helps you produce bile acids. Methylation helps you uh, basically take out the garbage. It's, it's a very, very important process, biochemically speaking, in the body. And one of the side effects of not methylating adequately is an increase in a chemical called homocysteine. And homocysteine directly can damage blood vessels. That's what vascular endothelial damage means. You get this damage caused by homocysteine, and that helps to contribute to atherosclerosis or plaque formation in your arteries. And that, you know, that can happen in your brain, it can happen in your heart, it can happen in your peripheral arteries, leading to uh, a number of different risks associated with heart disease. And then we have something called inhibition of choline synthesis. Choline is a B vitamin-like substance, and then you require vitamin B12 to produce it. If you've ever heard of the chemical acetylcholine, Acetylcholine is one of the primary neurotransmitters that your brain uses for cells to communicate. So B12 is necessary to produce that hormone or that neurotransmitter, acetylcholine, through choline synthesis. And of course, not having enough of it can create depression. That's why one of the symptoms of B12 deficiency is depression. Now, one of the other side effects of not having adequate choline is the liver can become fatty. The liver needs choline to deal with fat. And so choline deficiency will lead to uh, an overabundance of fat storage in your liver. And of course, in order to make that choline, to prevent this from happening, we need vitamin B12. So all tying back to vitamin B12, and I show you this because I just want you to know just how diverse something, what appears to be so simple as a B12 deficiency, but how diverse the symptoms can manifest in people. 
And it all goes back to what? Eating grain, over consuming grain, damaging the areas of your intestinal tract that are responsible for helping you absorb that B12. So lesson of the day, preserve your B12. If you haven't already picked up a copy of No Grain, No Pain, go pick it up, read it, apply the 30-day protocols. If you're struggling with things like depression and chronic pain and neuropathy and fatigue and shortness of breath, these can all be rooted in B12 deficiency, which can be rooted in grain-induced gastrointestinal damage. So go get your copy. Make sure you visit us at glutenfreesociety.org. Sign up for our Gluten-Free Survival Kit. It's free. We'll send you a bunch of excellent resources on how to navigate the gluten-free diet. And as always, comment below, but make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit the subscribe button so that you can get our video updates on a regular basis. This is Dr. Osborne, founder of Gluten-Free Society, wishing you excellent health and a fantastic day.